Utopia has been something that mankind has been striving to achieve since many, I think, the beginning of history. What if it was actually possible? This is the nature of the hunt. This is what the idealist among the hunters, or the imbued, say to themselves every night. They say they kill monsters to bring Utopia, to bring a better world free of their influence. And maybe some of them do. In fact, I personally like to think that most of them do on some level truly believe in this goal. They believe it to be noble and pure to save humanity and maybe some monsters and make the world a better place free of their corruption, free of their pain. This, however, is a very noble goal, but it is still just a goal. It's not a pathway. Sure, you can say we'll kill the monsters. But that's like saying I'm going to destroy an entire concept of a book by destroying one copy of it. It's not effective. You got, and not to mention books can be printed, like monsters can be made or born. So the question still remains, how does one end the hunt? How does one get in a situation where the hunt is no longer necessary? Well, some have theories. Some suggest that, like in some fiction, if you kill the head monster, or enough head monsters, the other ones will become too weak to fight, or they'll revert back to humans or something. Some suggest maybe killing Cain, or King Lycaea, or, or even Merlin may be the solution to deal with these problems, the higher-ups of great supernatural orders. Some may suggest killing the Morning Star himself, if such a feat is indeed impo is possible. But, all this is to say is that that's generally the fine art of if we kill a big thing, the small things won't matter anymore. It's, you know, possible, but that's like saying I can stop a war by killing its leader. You might have killed the head, but the nation still remains. But, perhaps I'm being a bit pessimistic in that regard. Perhaps it is a more possible goal than, people give it, than I give it credit for. But, many more will agree that it's going to take a little bit more than that. Another popular plan to deal with it is perhaps we just need to wake humanity up. If humanity sees the monsters, they will clearly reject their taint and their influence upon the world. And maybe they would. But then again, humans are complacent creatures, and the temptation of power that such monsters can give them is more than tempting for some. However, many subscribe that a true utopia might be impossible. It might be impossible to kill every vampire, to, to silver, you know, strike down with silver every werewolf, to bind every mage and burn them on a stick. That might just be impossible. But then again, what's the next best thing? Well, though some will still call it utopia, many more believe that if we just weaken the monsters enough, if we curb their influence enough, it will be worth it. If we just kill enough monsters, we don't need to kill them all, we just need to kill enough of them to where they're too weak to do anything. Or well, at least, of course, this isn't as simple as just kill a monster. No, this is a full-on pest organization against, if you will. You need to constantly be vigilant and on the hunt. So it doesn't really end the hunt, but it might save humanity, if that is worth it. But of course, many hunters, similar to Theory 2, suggest the only true option is revolution. Leave all be revolution. You know, or whatever language you wish to speak the revolution in. However, oh, I didn't speak an actual language, I was just being silly there. But, it does give off the feeling I'm trying to impose upon you. This will not, if you do go down the revolution route, that will not be easy for any imbued. First of all, despite how much the hunters and the imbued, more the imbued, like to deny it, they rely on modern civilization. You need the factories to produce your guns and bullets, you need the you need the farms to produce your food that you eat, you need someone to pump the gas that goes in your car, and when your car breaks down, you need someone to fix it. Sure, you might be able to do some of these things on your own, but you can't do it all. You're just a person, despite your powers. So, if you destroy a lot of things, you'll be weakening yourself potentially more than the monsters you're trying to fight. And it's not even as simple as just topple a government, you know, if that was ever simple. You need to top, to truly free the humanity of the monster taint. You will need to purge every government, 
every organization, every business, every corporation, every entertainment media conglomerate, you will need to topple down every toy manufacturer, every farm, every building, every religion, every cultural icon, all of it would have to go if you truly want to destroy everything the monsters played a part in. Because they might not have dictated all of human history, at least most of us would agree to that, but they've always influenced things. Everything always influences things, even if in minor, subtle ways. And I bet you that every hunter that has any shred of humanity left in them still has things they hold on to. Beliefs, customs, something. And I bet you more than any amount of money I could have in my wallet that was influenced by a monster in some subtle way across all of history. Are you willing to purge everything you hold dear? in the name of the hunt. Is that really something that the imbued on a mass scale are willing to do? All the waywards, the madmen, as I prefer to call them, are they right? Are they the destiny of the imbued? Are they going to go the same way of the solar exalted and fall from grace? <laughs> of course, I'm asking this question in a more rhetorical sense, or to a broader audience, because I know your answer. I know what you think of this. But of course, if you topple everything down, what will be left? There'll be scattered remnants of humans, unsure of what they're doing, leaving in practically a new dark age. As they cling to help, cling to desperation to anyone to save them from the nightmare that they were plunged into. And who should come knocking? Maybe the imbued will come. Maybe that's your plan. Maybe that's some of your plans, at least. The idea of being humanity's savior, showing them the way through this darkness, and maybe you could do it good, maybe you could lead them, but you're going on the idea of you being enlightened philosopher kings. Many imbued who go down this path forget that you are still human. You are still capable of horrible atrocities. You are just as capable of great deeds of kindness, but for every George Washington, there was a Hitler, or a Stalin, or a thousand more people like him. It's just not. You can't trust absolute power in everyone just absolutely. And I like to think that most people think that, but the imbued like to think they're special somehow. That they somehow aren't human and they aren't like the monsters. May I proceed to ask you, what if the reason the monsters have so much control over human society and culture was because the last generation of you people were the ones that burnt down the world and the monsters were the ones who saved humanity? Maybe that's true. Maybe it isn't. And I don't know and I don't care. Well, actually, I do know, and I do care, but I like to say that to stay neutral, but I know being neutral at this point is pointless with you, because I know what you did. You burnt down that museum because you knew it had an artifact of dark power in it. You didn't consider what it would unleash upon this town, upon this city, and now I'm going to have to go fix it if I have any hope of seeing any of these people stay alive, and I hope, I sincerely hope you learn from this somehow before I am going to beat you to Oh. You're pointing that gun at me. You think that gun is going... <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. How? I teach you all these things to try to help you, to try to show you a better path. Maybe you could have helped save the world. But in the end, you were just another human. Just another wayward. I thought maybe. Just maybe. I could fix one of you, but I guess I was wrong. Perhaps on some level, the creeds are decide by one's personality, and perhaps maybe all the waywards are the ones who would become corrupted by the hunt, and that's why they're ostracized internally, because they know it to be true. Because any other imbued can just sense the rawness in you. Even the Avengers think you're mad, the visionaries see your flaws, and the Mercy Creed see nothing but the hunt in you. You hunt for the sake of hunting. You have no sense of morality. You're a hunter with no principles, a warrior with no honor, and a barbarian with no home. And now you point at the one person who stood behind you this whole time trying to help you. <laughs> it's funny. You think you're going to get to shoot that pistol. <sighs> I hope the afterlife treats you better than you treat this world. Goodbye. Hey, why don't you hit that sub button? You're gonna become a subscriber. Get to see my content quicker. Wouldn't that be nice? I bet so.